This is a middle loop quick, quick, quick class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a quick class, part one, on a new series we're doing on waypoints. We first started using it on the Mavic 2 Pro and the smart controller. In fact, it's one of the reasons we needed to hang on to that drone when we upgraded to the Mavic 3, which, to our surprise, didn't include waypoints. And it took over a year for DJI to add that feature to the Mavic 3 in a firmware upgrade. In this series, we take a thorough look at that feature. We're planning on at least three or four, and possibly more videos on a variety of topics. This, of course, is the first in the series. And it's a little more than just an introduction. I'll tell you more of what you can expect today in a second. Then two videos on setting up Waypoint missions, each using a different technique. The first one is setting up the mission ahead of time, before arriving to the site. The second, which we prefer, is setting up the Waypoints on location. We're also planning on a deep dive getting into the details, plus a lot of other ideas. In today's tutorial, we'll first cover the basics. What exactly is a Waypoint mission? Then we'll show some real-life examples. This will give you some ideas of where waypoints might be useful. Next, we'll get into all of the settings you have control over as the drone moves from point to point and what you can program it to do when it gets to a point. Finally, we'll compare Waypoint 2.0, the version found on the Mavic 2, with this Mavic 3 version. There have been a number of improvements. As a reminder, subscribe, like, and tap that notify bell. We appreciate it. As I alluded to earlier, these videos are all about the Waypoint features that came out on the Mavic 3 series. It became available in December of 2022, and at the time of this recording, it's only available on the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Cine, and the Mavic 3 Classic. If others are added, we'll provide an update in the description. All the screenshots we're showing in this series are using the Mavic 3 Cine with the Fly app on the RC Pro. But we also tested it on the standard RCN1 controller and didn't see any noticeable differences. What is a Waypoint mission? It's an autonomous mission, you know, where the drone flies by itself, traveling to one or more predetermined points where it can perform a task. Most importantly, you can save the mission and run it over and over again. One quick note, if you own a stylus, we find it extremely helpful when setting up and editing Waypoint missions. If interested, we've included a link in the description to the one we use. Here are several use cases where we feel this feature is particularly useful. As we mentioned, one of our favorite uses of Waypoints is what we call aerial time-lapse. Not to be confused with DJI's other feature called hyperlapse. With an aerial time-lapse, you set up a Waypoint mission and then run it multiple times over a period of days, weeks, or even months. Then, edit the results together in a video to show the progression over time. We've done this for a construction company as a promotional piece for their website. We'll have some useful tips on aerial time-lapse in a future video. It's pretty common for a real estate investor who lives out of state, or for that matter, out of the country, to want frequent updates on a project. And of course, aerial photos or videos are extremely useful. Often, they want shots taken from multiple angles throughout the life of the project. Here your client could be the investor or owner, and in one case, we were hired by a builder who couldn't get out to the site every day, but wanted to keep tabs on the day-to-day -day progress. Flying at night can be a risky business. You just can't see obstacles as well as you can during the day. So why not set up your mission during the day as a waypoint mission, then return at night and run it capturing your video. Now we should mention that the autonomous flight is based on GPS positioning and is not exact. Be sure to give yourself plenty of leeway and err on the safe side. Instead of just flying the drone manually, you might consider setting up a quick waypoint mission to get that perfect shot. That way you can run it, tweak it, and run it again and again, tweaking it as you go until you're 100% satisfied. Along the same theme of getting that perfect shot, there are some settings which allow you to set up the waypoint mission to just control the flying of the drone, allowing you to focus on manually controlling the gimbal and camera. So what exactly can you program in a waypoint mission? First, let's break it down to two categories. There are the waypoints, and then there are the points of interest. Waypoints are the points in the sky that the drone flies to. Points of interest, or POIs, control what the camera is looking at. According to DJI support, you can set as many as 200 waypoints in your mission. 
Each waypoint location has three dimensions. That's the latitude, longitude, and altitude. You also control the speed of the drone as it travels between each point. There's an overall global speed, which is to maintain a constant speed between all points, but you can also deviate from the global speed and set a different speed between any two points. And then there's the hover setting. Here you can set how long the drone stays at a given waypoint before moving on to the next. In addition, you also have the ability to set a camera action at any waypoint. You can tell the drone to start a video recording or stop it or take a photo. As I mentioned, you can also control what the camera is pointed at during the mission. By default, it's set to follow the course, always looking forward to the next waypoint. But you have a lot of options here. You can have it in manual mode where you control the camera while the drone flies itself. Or you can set exactly what the camera is pointed at when the drone gets to each waypoint. You can even control the zoom level at that point up to 3x. And then there's point of interest or POI. You can set a POI, which is just a point on the map, and the altitude of that POI. In fact, you can have multiple POIs and tell the drone which one to face at each of the waypoints and the drone automatically stays pointed in that direction as it flies from point to point. Okay, two more settings. The first is the setting to tell the drone what to do at the end of the mission. It can return to home, hover, go back to the first waypoint, or land. And then the second setting tells the drone what to do if it loses communication with the controller. This has actually happened to me once. I had it set to complete the mission and then return home, which is exactly what it did. If you have experience with Waypoints 2.0 on the Mavic 2, I think you'll find it familiar, but somehow it seems more intuitive. I like how the waypoints and points of interest are listed. It just makes it easier to edit. Now, most of the features of the original still exist even if they've changed some of the naming. So let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison and we'll be highlighting the deltas. In the original, there was a global setting to select polyline or arc. This option is no longer available. Now it's just fixed on arc, which as far as we're concerned is fine. We pretty much only used arc anyway. On the older version, polyline would travel in a straight line between waypoints, but we always found it a bit abrupt. With the arc setting, now your only choice, the drone smooths out the corners as it travels from waypoint to waypoint. There was also this weird side effect on the old version when set to arc. It prevented you from using some of the other settings. Well, all of that is gone now. You now have the ability to control the zoom of the camera at each waypoint. I should say we're not actually sure this is a new feature. It was not available on the Mavic 2 Pro version, but we never had our hands on the Mavic 2 Zoom to test this feature. This one is definitely new. It's very much welcome. At any waypoint, you can have it hover for up to 30 seconds while it takes a video or photo before moving on to the next waypoint. Now, there are a couple of other little things, and we'll be including this chart in the description if you'd like to take a closer look. But that's it for part one in our series on waypoints. And we've created a YouTube playlist to make it easy to find all the videos in the series. If you'd like to be notified as we add new videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that notify button. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.